and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the next Vice President and Second Lady of the United States, Senator J.D. Vance and Usha Vance. Wow, wow. Well, it is great, my friends, to be in Wilmington, North Carolina. And it's great because we're going to win Wilmington. We're going to win the state of North Carolina. We're going to make Donald Trump the next president of the United States. So I'm going to tell you something. I, I bet very few, maybe, maybe no one knows this, that I actually was an extra in a TV show that was filmed in Wilmington, North Carolina. Did you ever see the, the show One Tree Hill? That was filmed here, right? I remember when I was when I was uh, in the Marine Corps, Semper Fi to all the Marines out there. I know we got a lot of Marines here. But they showed up one day and they said, all right, we'll feed you and we'll pay you $300 to be an extra in One Tree Hill. So uh, that was my exposure to Wilmington. It's good to be back. And uh, it's good to be back as your vice presidential candidate. And my friends, we're going to win this race. I'm telling you, we're going to win this race. I.O. Now, I got to say, we got a Middletonian right here. Yeah. Love you, ma'am. Thank you. Proud of Middletown. And, and look, here, here's the thing. I was thinking about this. I saw Tim Walsh's plane uh, this morning. No, 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 no. I got to tell you, I honestly, I feel bad for Tim Walsh. Because think about it, Tim Walz has got to defend the record of Kamala Harris, and I've got to defend the re record of Donald J. Trump. That's a hell of a record to run on. We're proud of him. We're proud of him because he did a good job for the American people. And look, you don't, you don't have to agree with everything that I, I, I say. You don't have to agree with every policy. You don't have to agree with everything that Donald Trump says. But who can dispute? that when he was the president of the United States, we had rising take-home pay, we had low inflation, and we had a secure southern border. Let's get back to it. To my friends in North Carolina, let's get back to those common sense policies. Now, Tim Walz has to defend Kamala Harris. That's a, he's got the toughest job in America. He's got to defend the record of Kamala Harris. And I, I don't know if you noticed, but when Kamala Harris goes out there running for President of the United States, she pretends that she's never even met Joe Biden. She runs as, as far away from Joe as she possibly can. You would think that she had never even seen the President of the United States, and yet she is the sitting Vice President, who's not just the sitting Vice President, but bragged for years 
that she was the last person in the room before Joe Biden made so many of the disastrous decisions that increased the cost of groceries, increased the cost of housing, opened the southern border. Joe Biden is Kamala Harris, and we're going to fire Kamala Harris, not send her to the White House and give her promotion. Now, I will say, I will say Kamala's making it a little bit easier for us, my friends. And I, I, you know, I think she's the only candidate who's ever run for president where every time she opens her mouth, we gain about 100,000 votes on the other side. And, and I believe in about, I, I'm going to try to be reasonably quick here because I believe that in about 10 minutes, she's, she's going to do the first non-softball interview that she's ever done on Fox News. Now... Of, of course, you know, President Trump and I, we do non-softball interviews every single day because we think that's what you ought to do. If you want to run for president, you ought to get out there and answer the people's questions and actually do the job of running for president. And pe you know, you'll, you'll hear people say, they'll say, well, Kamala Harris has given more softball interviews lately. And I say, well, the problem with the softball interview is that you still got to be able to hit a softball. And I see the, 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 great, the great attorney general candidate and the great congressman, Dan Bishop, in the audience. Dan, stand up and say hello to folks. And, you know, Dan, I, I, uh, I was thinking this, you know, Kamala Harris, she, she can't hit a softball. She can't even hit a t-ball. And I think that's, that's the problem here is, is the reason she does so bad in these interviews is because her record is so bad for the American people. And let's just think about this. In, 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 in the state of North Carolina, we've got people who are paying a thousand more a month thanks to her policies to afford a life that they could have afforded when Donald Trump was president. Nothing good about that. Thanks to Kamala Harris's policies, this country, this state, and this community have been flooded with millions upon millions of illegal aliens. And, you know, not just flooded. But Kamala Harris has welcomed them with open arms and then said, if you make it into this country illegally, she wants to give you free Medicare and free housing. And you know, you know, our message in the Trump campaign is just a little bit different. Our message to illegal aliens is, if you came to this country illegally, pack your bags, because in four months you're going home. Kamala Harris casting the deciding vote on trillions of dollars of new spending and going to war on American energy, North Carolina families are paying more for gas, about 25% more than they were when Donald Trump was president. They're paying 25% more for groceries than when Donald Trump was president. And they're paying 53% more for housing than when Donald Trump was president. Now, here is the simple Donald Trump plan to restore a golden age of prosperity in this country. We're going to cut taxes for American workers. We're going to cut down on the terrible regulations that make it harder to hire and create a business in the United States of America. We're going to unleash American energy and lower the cost of fuel and electricity for American families. And we are going to make it harder for companies to ship American jobs overseas. We're going to create prosperity right here in North Carolina and all across the United States of America. Because for too long, we've had leaders like Kamala Harris. And, and again, she has been in office for 1,400 days. We have leaders like Kamala Harris who would like to reward companies for shipping jobs overseas instead of creating good American jobs right here at home. And, and perhaps the, the worst of all of Kamala Harris's policies is that she wants to tax you and tax your friends and family and pay people to buy electric vehicles made in China. And you know what Donald Trump and I think? We think we, you ought to be able to drive whatever the hell you want to because this is America and we want to support American automakers. Now, 
You know, one of the things the media doesn't like to talk about, even though it's as plain as day, is that we have a housing crisis in this country because we've got millions upon millions of people who shouldn't be here in the first place. Now, this is just common sense. Think about this. If you let in 25 million people into the country illegally, people who have no right to be here, you got to put them somewhere. They got to have housing somewhere. And if you take away housing that ought to go to American citizens, what are you going to do? You're going to have what we have in this country today, which is that young people can't afford to buy a home. And I'm a big believer in the American dream of home ownership. And to all the young people, especially those who are watching at home or watching some of the clips, we are going to fight for American citizens to be able to afford American homes. And it's really actually that simple. You just got to get illegal immigrants out of our country. You've got to put the interests of our citizens first, and then you've got to lower the mortgage interest rates because thanks to Kamala Harris's policies, the interest rates are just too damn high, and Donald Trump's going to lower them. And here's how we're going to lower them. We're going to lower them because we're going to stop spending money we don't have. We're going to lower them by unleashing American energy, lower the price of everything. And we're going to lower interest rates by making sure that American homes don't go to illegal aliens. It's very, very simple. It's going to work. It's going to make the American dream of home ownership more affordable. Now, I, I want to talk to not look, there are all these substantive disagreements that we have with Kamala Harris. There are all these issues where we could say, well, you know, Donald Trump supports lowering taxes on American families and Kamala Harris supports raising them. Donald Trump supports closing the border and building the wall, and Kamala Harris wants to open the border. You know, Donald Trump wants to build a world of peace and stability, and Kamala Harris seems to encourage chaos and war to break out everywhere. But set, set to the side all these policy disagreements that we have with Kamala Harris, I think the most important thing about Kamala Harris is that she's incompetent. She does not have the competence to be president of the United States. And just think about this. Look. We, 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 of course, in, in, in the state of North Carolina, but all across the southeast, all across Appalachia, a lot of folks were hit very hard by Hurricane Helene. And I know that a lot of us are, are, are praying people. We ought to say a prayer for, for those folks. Every single day, they're fighting to rebuild their lives. They're fighting to grieve loved ones and rebuild out of a terrible, terrible situation. And look, that storm was, was a terrible act of nature. But the bureaucratic incompetence that delayed resources getting to people, that was an act of Kamala Harris and failed leadership. And we can't let, can't let people forget about it. Now, now think, think about this. You know, you're probably shocked to hear me praise. I'm going I'm to do something that's going to really surprise you. I'm going to say something nice about Barack Obama. In 2010, the lady back here said, yeah, I'm shocked by that. Surprise my staff, surprise everybody here. But look, 2010, there was a terrible earthquake in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Two days later, the 82nd Airborne was in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. God bless the 82nd Airborne. We had a terrible natural disaster an hour away from the 82nd Airborne, and it took six days for them to get to North Carolina. That is Kamala Harris and Joe Biden's fault. It is a disgraceful failure of leadership. When Donald Trump and I are in the White House, it's not going to happen. We're going to send the 82nd Airborne to help our citizens. We're going to have FEMA helping our people. And the American government is going to fight for American citizens once again. And here, 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 here's the thing, I, you know, there's a lot of crazy stuff out there on the internet. I actually don't think that it was some malicious intent that made FEMA as unresponsive and delayed the critical deployment of the 82nd Airborne. I think it's just because people are incompetent. Joe Biden was on the beach, probably didn't know where the hell he was. Kamala Harris was at a San Francisco fundraiser, but the critical test of leadership comes in a moment of crisis. And at that moment of crisis for the people of North Carolina, Kamala Harris wasn't doing her job. I promise you that Donald J. Trump will, and he'll fight to do his job for you every single day.
Now, I want to say just a couple more things here before we, we take some questions. You know, the main thing that I, I want you to take away uh, from, from, from this event today is that, yes, Donald Trump is going to be the president of the United States. And I really do believe that, my friends. I, I think that I think we're going to win this state. Trust me, those of us in the Trump campaign, the staff, the, the principals, the people at the top of the ticket, and certainly our man, Donald Trump, we're feeling good about this race. And it's because y'all are working hard, and we're grateful for it. But the only way we're to, we're to get President Trump and me across the finish line is if we get out there and vote. And I'm gonna, and I'm gonna make a few requests of you. And uh, the first is that I want every single person here to get out there and vote 10 times. Now, some of y'all are shifting uncomfortably and saying, well, we don't do that. We only vote once. That's what Republicans do. We, we follow the law. Well, here's the legal way to go and vote 10 times. Take yourself and then take nine friends and family to the polls. And that's what I want all of us to do. And look, I, I, I know, I mean, I, this is true of every single person out here, including me. We've got people in our lives who, who, who are smart. They're common sense people, but they don't really pay that close attention to politics. And we got to motivate them. We got to encourage them to say that even if they don't care that much about politics, politics cares about them. And if we don't get Donald Trump back in the White House, this terrible affordability crisis and the terrible crisis at the southern border is going to continue. So let's get our people out there, even the ones that don't care about politics, maybe especially the ones that don't care about politics. We got to make sure they get out there and vote. That's number one. Number two. Now, again, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk for a little bit longer, then I'm going to take some questions from the press. But number two, wh whether it's now, whether it's five minutes from now, whether it's 10 minutes from now, I want each of you to take out your phones, take a photo of this event, take a, take a photo of that beautiful airplane with Trump Vance on it. And what, you know, I, I got to tell you, growing up in, in a working class family raised by my grandmother, it is pretty wild to be flying around in a plane with your name on it. That's pretty cool. A great, great testament to the American dream and the, and the possibilities of this country. But take out your phone, take a photo, and wh whether it's text, texting a lot of people, emailing a lot of people, send that photo, social media, x.com, Facebook, whatever you use, post it and talk about why you're voting for Donald Trump for president. Because think about it, I, I don't know exactly how many people we have here. I mean, it looks probably around 1,000 people. If every single one of us reaches 100 people, think about it, that's 100,000 people that would not have heard the pro-Trump message. And, and trust me, they're not hearing it from the corporate media, so they've got to hear it from us. We have power. We have an ability to reach people. We just got to use the tools that God has given us. And, and, and luckily, in this era of great communication, we've got a lot of tools to get the message out about why we need to support Donald Trump. Here's the third thing. And the final thing I'll ask you, I want you to go to this website, and I want to make sure I get it right here. It is swapthevoteusa.com, and I'll repeat that, swapthevoteusa.com. That's a website that we built so that people can check their registration, check where their polling location is. Maybe they can request an absentee ballot. Maybe they're going to vote early. Maybe you're going to vote on Election Day. Just get out there and vote before November the 5th. That's it. That's the deadline, right? And, and, and look, I, I'm one of these people, but I don't like election season. I like election day. But as Donald Trump would say, it is what it is. And if we're going to have a long election season, then Republicans have got to take advantage of that stuff as much as Democrats are. And that's exactly what we've got to do, my friends. Get out there, make your voice heard, and that is how we're going to make Donald J. Trump the next president of the United States. Now, you know, I want to, I, I want to, you know, because I know uh, apparently Kamala is doing this interview with Brett Baer soon on Fox News. And I, I want to point out an interview that she did about 10 days ago, because I think, frankly, my friends, it blew up the entire narrative of her campaign. And I think you, all, all of us here, most of us hopefully know that she's running a dishonest campaign. But there are a lot of folks who are watching this who may not realize that Kamala Harris bears the responsibility for the failures of the Biden administration. And, you know, she, she, she gave this interview to The View. And again, it's supposed to be a softball interview. But they said, what would you do differently than Joe Biden over the last three and a half years? 
And her answer was, nothing comes to mind. Now, I think, by the way, that should be the slogan of the Kamala Harris campaign, nothing comes to mind, because I think that's, that's unfortunately true. But think about this. After running on the idea that she would lower price, prices for American citizens, nothing comes to mind that she would have done differently. After talking about how she's going to restore peace and stability in a world that has been ripped apart by war and chaos, nothing comes to mind that she would have done differently. After 94 executive orders that opened the border and flooded our communities with fentanyl, nothing comes to mind that she would have done differently. If nothing comes to mind that she would have done differently over the last three and a half years, then we need to get the real candidate of change, Donald J. Trump, back in the White House to restore peace, restore prosperity, and restore common sense to the United States of America. So here, here's what we're gonna do, friends, and I'll, I'll take some questions. Here's what we're gonna do. When we make Donald Trump the next president, we're gonna make groceries and housing more affordable. When we make Donald Trump the next president, we are gonna secure the southern border and stop the Mexican drug cartels from waging war on our country. When we make Donald Trump the next president, we are gonna make the American dream affordable for American citizens again. And when we make Donald Trump the next president, we are gonna usher in a golden age of American prosperity for the state of North Carolina and the people all across this incredible land. Let's go get it done, my friends. Get out there and vote. Make Donald Trump the next president. The country needs it, and we're gonna fight for it every single day. God bless y'all. 19 days to go, let's make it count, and let's get our man across the finish line. God bless you all, thank you. Now, again, I, I, I want to take some questions from the reporters, and, I, and I'm going to start with the local reporters, but it's getting a little chilly out here. I mean, this is North Carolina. It's supposed to be a little warmer in mid-October than North Carolina. Maybe it's just been too long since I've been here in mid-October, but uh, I, I, I want to... Uh, there's a cold front, apparently. Thank you, sir. I need to get better weather reporting from my staff before we come out here, but I, I, I want to, you know... Uh, for all the, the gratitude that I have for folks for being out here, I just want to say, of course, that the person that I'm most thrilled to, to have with me, the two people I'm most thrilled to have with me are my beautiful wife and my son, Ewan. And I love you guys. This, <laughs> you, Ewan is sitting over there with a blanket over him saying, why the hell did I agree to come with dad on the plane today? That is not a child built for, for cold weather, but we, we, we love you guys, and, and as you all know, it's, this is so much fun for me, but it's a lot of sacrifice for the family, and we're thrilled, honey, that you could come with me and bring our beautiful boy. So we love you, and I know the crowd loves you. So what I'd like to do is start with the local reporters, and because it's pretty chilly, we, only, we might only get through three or four, but we'll try to do as, as many as we possibly can. Let's start with the first question. Welcome to Wilmington, Senator Vance. Thank you, sir. Uh, my first question for you is, now, our dog workers recently went on strike asking for higher wages and protection against automation. What will your administration do to make sure these workers are confident in making this temporary agreement a permanent and acceptable one? Yes, sir. Well, look, we, we love our dock workers, and I wouldn't be surprised if we have some dock workers just in this audience right now. The reason the dock, look, the, the, the very simple reason the dock workers went on strike is because the dollar just doesn't go as far as it did three and a half years ago. And this is why Donald Trump calls inflation a country buster, because if you think about it, if the dock workers aren't making enough to survive, and then they go on strike, then we can't get the goods that we need. This just becomes a vicious spiral. We've got to get back to common sense economic policies so that our dock workers can thrive and so that everybody can thrive who depends on their very, very important work. Here, here's what I'd say about this is, look, 
Uh, we, we believe in technological innovation in, in the Republican Party. We believe in technological innovation in our country. But I think that we can have technological innovation while protecting the wages of our workers, whether at our ports and our manufacturing facilities. And as a matter of fact, when you have an innovative economy, that leads to higher wages and higher take-home pay for all workers. The problem with the Kamala Harris economy is we don't have nearly as much innovation. We got to get back to the dollar being worth something again. That's going to happen when Donald Trump is president. And we got to get back to innovation in our economy. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity, Senator Van Sidney Schofield from ABC 11. I noticed that Mark Robinson has not been at a Trump Vance event in quite some time. He's not here today. And frankly, he is falling behind in the polls. Can you clarify if the Trump Vance campaign still endorses Mark Robinson for governor of North Carolina and why? Look, the reason, first of all, I think Mark Robinson did a hell of a job with those hurricanes getting out there and helping people. I thought that was very admirable. And I, and I, and I really appreciate that, but look, my, my, my view on this issue is that who the North Carolina voters make their next governor is up to the people of North Carolina. What I'm, what, what I'm here to do is to persuade them that they need to make Donald Trump their next president, and I think that's what they're going to do. And we're going to keep on fighting for that every single day. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome to Wilmington, Senator Vance. I'm Delaney Tarpley with WECT News. Law enforcement recently arrested an armed man for threats made against FEMA workers in Rutherford County. I'm just wondering if you have a comment on the threats made against the men and women who are working to help victims and counties recover from Hurricane Helene. Well, first of all, look, we, we of course condemn threats of violence. I think it's disgraceful to, to, to threaten violence against anybody, especially relief workers. And we got to remind people that our criticism here is not for the FEMA workers on the ground. It's the broken political leadership in Washington. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Think about it. FEMA is the Federal Emergency Management Agency. That's what FEMA stands for. Why is the agency that is set up to help American citizens in the face of disaster spending billions of taxpayer dollars resettling illegal immigrants that ought to focus on its core mission? Why, why, is, why, why is the leadership of FEMA focused on resettling migrants instead of preparing and presetting resources for the next storm? That's a failure of leadership. It's not a failure of people on the ground who are trying to help people. But I, I will tell you, if you know somebody in Western North Carolina, I imagine pretty much everybody in this crowd knows a lot of folks in Western North Carolina, a lot of them will say a week and a half into the storm, they didn't see anybody. They weren't getting any help. They weren't getting any relief. So the scandal here is not that a crazy person, as much as we condemn him, threatened violence. That's always a bad thing. The scandal here is that people in Western North Carolina went days and weeks without the help of their own government. And that's what we have to fix. And we will when Donald Trump is president. Next, next question. Thank you, Senator. I'd love to hear more about the One Tree Hill moment, but for another day. Um, I wanted to ask you about what you had said earlier in Pennsylvania about the 2020 election results. You've been asked that on the debate stage with Walls and then again in the New York Times interview five times and uh, by other reporters. Yes, look, my, my ma'am, look. My, my answer on this, and I, I answer this question a million times when I ran for the Senate, uh, the 2022 Republican primary. I've answered this question in the 2022 general election. I've answered this question 10 times recently. I think that big tech rigged the election in 2020. That's my view. And if you disagree with me, that's fine. What? what? Why did you answer it now? I'm sorry? Why did you answer the question now? Why did you say no when you didn't say it before? I answered, I've given that exact question for years. And this is, this is such a preposterous thing that the American media does. I have given this answer to this question for literally years. And the American media wants to focus on what happened four years ago than the fact that North Carolinians, North Carolinians can't afford groceries. I think that's a disgrace. Do your job and focus on the problems the American people care about rather than bullshit from four years ago.
And look, I, I, I honestly, my, my friends, I, I, I'm sure there are as many opinions about, the, about what happened four years ago as there are people in this audience. I really, if, if you disagree with me on an issue, or you disagree with me about what I just said, or you disagree without a particular policy view of the Trump administration, that's fine. Because I believe in the United States of America, it's okay to disagree. What I think that we're all united on is that we need to get Kamala Harris out of the Oval Office so that Americans can afford to live a good life again. Hi, Senator, it's Kit with CNN. I wanted to ask you on Friday, okay. It's all, it's all right, you. no, it's all right. I, I always joke. Kit's, Kit's actually, she's actually one of the good CNN reporters. They do exist. But, Kit, I always wonder when I say that if you're actually welcome back in the newsroom at CNN because I actually said something nice about you. Well, there I spent there you more go. I'm time in the field, so. Well, that's, that's good. good. That's, that's, um, that's good. Anyway, on Friday at your event, it, you said that the attorney general job, it would be the most important role. That's if, right. After president, of course. Who do you want to see in that role, and what do you make of Trump's former appointments? Kid, I, I'm not going to make any news about how we're, who we're looking at for attorney general. Obviously, the president makes the final decision, but we're looking at a lot of good people. The reason that I said that, Kid, is, is very simple. And, and obviously, this is a little bit of a hit to my ego. I'd like to say that the person who's most important after the president would be me. But honestly, I appreciate that. But look. What we've seen out of the Department of Justice in the last four years in this country, I think is such a disgrace and we've got to do better. We, re we really have to. And I, I, I really believe, and one of the fundamental principles of our country is equal justice under law. You've got Catholic pro-life fathers of seven arrested like a common criminal for exercising their First Amendment rights peacefully. You've got government bureaucrats encouraging big technology companies to censor their fellow Americans. You've got people who are protesting peacefully at their children's school board meetings, and then an investigation is launched into them, right? Everybody focuses on corruption at the DOJ and focuses on how that's affected, you know, President Trump and, and some of his close advisors. That obviously matters. But the federal government weaponizing law enforcement to go after common citizens, it is a disgrace and we have to stop it. And that's why I think it's so important that we get a good attorney general. Senator Vance, I have one more question. By the way, yes, I'm sir. Keelan Berry with WWAY News here in Wilmington. Thank you, sir. Um, of course, our hearts and prayers go out to those in Western North Carolina, but here in that area, we go through a lot of flooding as well, too, of course. especially after heavy flooding events. So what can the federal government do to assist state and local governments and residents preparing and recovering from flood of events that's happened, you know, from an unnamed storm? Yes, sir. Well, look, a really good question, and I, I think the most important simple answer, and I'll, I'll expand upon it a little bit, is we got to have competence back in government. When these crises happen, you just need somebody who's actually paying attention, who's focusing, who makes sure the resources go to the people who need it. You can't have a government where nobody's actually in charge, and unfortunately, that's what we've got way too much, thanks to Kamala Harris's leadership. Two, two things in particular. Look, when you have a crisis like what happened in Western North Carolina, but obviously, you know, this part of the state has been affected, as you said, by a number of storms, too. You've got so many different bureaucratic agencies. One of the things that you've got to do is just have a leader who's saying, all of you are empowered to save lives, to rescue people. Go get to work and cut out worrying about the red tape. That's a big part of what you need is that empowerment of some of these local responses. You know, a second thing, and this is a big issue in North Carolina, probably a bigger issue, frankly, in Florida and Georgia, but it's an issue all across the Southeast is insurance is getting way too expensive for a lot of our homeowners. This is a big problem. A lot of our, of, uh, you know, not just homeowners, but also, you know, folks who are, who are getting car insurance. I think that we could do a better job of lowering car and home insurance rates. And again, making that American dream of owning a home, of owning a car more affordable for more of our citizens. I think that's one of the best ways, because of course, one of the ways that people really struggle in the wake of these disasters is if they don't have the right home insurance policy, we've got to make smarter policy choices so that people get the insurance they need. And I'll do, I'll, 
I'll, I'll, I'll do one more question here, and then we'll hit the road. Thank you, oh, thank you sir. Alec from NBC News. Um, you noted yesterday in Pennsylvania what we've seen in public polling, which is that there seems to be a pretty um, stark gender gap sure. uh, between your campaign and, and Vice President uh, Harris's. I was curious if you could speak to what you think is behind that. Why do you think there's such a discrepancy between men and women in this election? Well, you know, f first of all, I, I, I will say that, look, there's clearly a gender gap, but I think it's not nearly as big as the polls say it is. Um, and I think that's important to point out is, look, I, I think we're going to get a lot of women supporting the Trump Vance ticket. And, and, and of course, a lot of men, too, because we're united for common sense. And I think that, you know, what, one of the arguments that we, I, I think we can make better, especially to women voters, it matters to all voters, but I think in particular uh, to women voters, especially moms of small children, is, is we see that moms care a lot about public safety. They want to be able to take their kid walking in their neighborhood at 9 o'clock at night without the fear that they're going to be mugged or without the fear that an illegal alien who shouldn't be in this country is going to commit some violent assault. we got to get back to public safety. And I think that, you know, the, the FBI, it looks like, just released some updated crime numbers, which suggested crime was higher than they previously let on in 2022. I'm shocked by that. Just kidding. But look, what, what's so interesting about violent crime is it is a very small number of people who commit the gross majority of violent crimes in our country. What President Trump and I want to do is empower law enforcement, lock up the violent criminals, make our streets safer. And I think that's a message that works with a lot of women voters, and that's what we're going to keep on talking about. All right. So one more time, the third time I've said it, you're sick of it. SwampTheVoteUSA.com. SwampTheVoteUSA.com. I see, I see some folks have my book. I'm sorry I can't sign them because we gotta we gotta hit the road. But it's available wherever bookstores are sold. So just know that. But here here's what I, I want to say, and and I know that it's easy to get frustrated with the policies of Kamala Harris. I certainly do. It's it's easy to get frustrated with the fact that she apparently doesn't even care about public policy and governance. That's why she gives these word salad answers to all these questions. Like, I just want somebody competent who cares about this country to be its next leader, and that's clearly not Kamala Harris. But what, what I'd ask you is to not let our frustration at Kamala Harris blind us to the fact that this is still the greatest country in the history of the world, and we ought to be proud of it. And. and And, I, and I, I, see, I see my beautiful son over there, and uh, he's, he's, I'm sure, annoyed that his daddy's embarrassing him right now. But one of the coolest things about running for vice president is that I've gotten to see the country from the perspective of my seven-year-old, my four-year-old, and my two-year-old. We go around. We talk to a ton of people. We, we sort of, you know, we were at a small business earlier today buying some dog treats for our dog in rural Pennsylvania. And now we're here in, in beautiful North Carolina watching a pink and purple sunset. I mean, this is an incredible country that we have. It's the most beautiful country in the world. But it, it, it is also a country where we have incredible natural resources. I mean, resources the Chinese and the Russians would literally kill for and in some cases have. And of course, the best natural resource of all is that we have the best people anywhere in the world. The only thing, my friends, the only thing that is broken about the United States of America is the failed leadership of a generation of politicians like Kamala Harris. So I ask you, we've got 19 days to go. Let's spend every single one of those days fixing the broken leadership and giving the American people a president who is fit to lead this great nation. That's Donald J. Trump. Let's work our tail ends off and get it done. God bless you all. Thank you for having me, and we'll see you soon, North Carolina.